Do you want that larger than life SSL console sound but you don't have space for it in your bedroom? Then watch this full review of the brand new Brainworks BX console SSL 9000J plugin to see if it delivers. Hi, I'm Marlon and this is the White Noise Studio. I will do this plugin review on its own merits. The reason for this is that chances are that no one who watches this review has ever used a real SSL 9000J console, since there were only 190 sold worldwide. But let me do a quick check of everyone here in the studio. Have you ever used a real SSL 9000J console? No. Ah, too bad. Ok, before we start, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit that notification bell so you know when there's a new video online on this channel, a channel to help you out in recording, mixing and mastering. The Brainworks BX Console SSL 9000J is an official emulation of the SSL 9000J console, with some extras. So the review will be a review of the plugin on its own merits and how it sounds on a mix. Let's check out the BX Console SSL 9000J. I've loaded in the project and I've inserted the SSL 9000J on every track and I will use only this plugin uh, for the sake of this review. I did add a little bit of delay and reverb on the Skank track. As you can see I've inserted the plugin on every track. I will start mixing and explain how the plugin sounds and how it works as we go along. So here are all plugins inserted with no tweaks whatsoever. Let's play a bit of the loop. And now we'll turn all the plugins on and off. You can hear that even without tweaking, the plugin adds something. It makes it a little bit bigger. You can hear it especially on the snare drum. Okay, let's now start mixing and I'll start out with the kick track, which actually is a sort of a kick room track. Here is the kick track and here is the BX console. Let's solo the kick. And we'll start by adding EQ. As you can see there is a low frequency and a high frequency shelf. And there are low mid frequency bands and high mid frequency bands. The low shelf and the high shelf are both uh, switchable between shelf and bell. Let's use bell for this track. And I will reduce some of the high frequencies. With this knob you can bypass the EQ. I think it needs more low end and let's add it with this low mid frequency band. Now it goes down to 200 Hz but if you push this button it will be divided by 3 so now it will be 67 Hz. So if it doesn't go low enough you can push this button and it goes even lower. Okay. Here is the dynamics section and where this differs with the original console is this mix knob. So you can use the compression in parallel compression mode if you want to. Okay, let's tweak around with it. The controls are release ratio and threshold uh, as with almost every other compressor. This little button here switches the dynamics between hard knee and soft knee characteristic. You can compare it with the hard knee and soft knee of a DBX168. And here is the high pass filter for the compressor. So it has high pass side chaining which is a nice touch and cannot be found on the original console. The F enables fast attack.
the manual stage is especially nice for vocals, but it can also be used for slamming drums and rooms. Okay, I think it's a bit loud now, so let's lower the output volume. Let's continue with the snare drum. For this one I will enable the input filters, which is a high pass and a low pass. I have one little issue with the high pass filter and that is that the frequencies are the other way around. So the high frequencies are on the left side and the low frequencies are on the right side. And then the rest of the plugins, all of the low frequencies are on the left side of the knob and high frequencies on the right side of the knob. You can get used to it, but I think it is a bit annoying. The high and low pass filters have a multiply by three and a divided by three button. And for the high pass it works like this. It's now set to 77 Hz and if I push the times 3 button it will be set to 231 Hz. And for the low pass it's the other way around. Now it's set to 60 kHz <laughs> and if I push the divided by 3 it will be set to 20 kHz. And these buttons will enable your high and low pass filter. And if you enable the Dynamics Sidechain button, these filters will be used uh, for the Dynamics section. Okay, let's continue. This snare drum can use a little bit of cleaning up and I will use the gate and expander section for it. That cleans it up a bit. The expander has a normal to inverse switch, let me show you. So if you will use this button it will inverse the gate so it will do ducking instead of gating. This reminds me of the negative ratio settings on the Elysia Impressor. There are a few controls more on the expander gate section. This one over here will change the expander threshold range. Uh, the expander button will change the gate into an expander. And we have a fast attack button here which switches the gate and expander between auto and fast attack. Okay, let's continue with the bass guitar. Okay, let's just tweak around with this. I will add a bit of low end. I will use shelf for this one. Let's go to around 90 and increase the low shelf. And now I will add some mid-range knock. Let's reduce some high end. And let's go for slow attack. Ratio is fine, release a bit quicker. And clean up the bass a little bit. Ah, that will do. And let me adjust the output volume. Okay, let's hear it in the mix. Let's 
Let's go over to the skank and I will enable the reverb and delay now. Okay, this one will need a little bit of mid-range boost. I have boosted the high mid frequencies with 20 dBs, which is a lot. So I had a 20 dB boost and I sweeped around the frequency spectrum and the sound stayed pleasant. It made it really easy to find the right spot for this uh, skank track. If I would do that with the standard EQ of Cubase, uh, it would sound more harsh. It was a lot more difficult to find the sweet spot. Let me demonstrate. First I will bypass the plugin and pull up the standard EQ of Cubase. Here we are. Let's do it again. And now the plugin. You notice a difference. Even with a broad cue of 0.9 in Cubase, it was still pretty difficult to find the sweet spot and it still sounded a bit harsh and uh, too much resonant. The SSL 9000J, on the other hand, sounded pleasant with a similar cue and gain boost. And then we have a delay rooms track. Let's try to make this one big sounding. First I will add a bit of high passing and a bit of low passing. Did you notice that the low pass sounds pretty smooth? Let's do it a bit more. Let's compress these room mics. Only on the stereo version you find this link button, which will link the left and right channel. So whichever channel has the loudest volume will affect the other channel too. Okay, let's raise the threshold. I think I need more, and to achieve that, I will increase the input gain. So if you need more input gain for the compressor, you can always raise the input gain button and you can compensate that by using the fader on the end. Uh, let's do a little bit of EQ. Let's check it in the mix. There are still a few controls and buttons which I did not mention. Let's do it now. Here's the face reverse switch. There's an overall mute button.
then you have this V gain knob, which adds noise. The manual states that you add a little bit of noise to every track and then control it with the gate and expander to get a more authentic console sound. And then we have this, the TMT inside. TMT is basically a snapshot of a channel. And since the SSL 9000J emulates a 72 channel console, every channel sounds slightly different. To get this big console sound, you can select a different snapshot for every instance of the SSL 9000J plugin you use. Let's use the randomize option. You can do it for one channel like this, or you can do it for all channels. So every channel will have a little different number, which is a different snapshot. See? Different numbers, different snapshots. The idea behind TMT is that every channel has a slightly different sound and slightly different harmonics. So in total it will sound bigger. I support this idea. I talked about something similar, but with two guitars in the drag neck mix deconstruction I did. Small variations will add to a bigger sound. Okay, some more controls. Uh, we have key over here. The key button enables external sidechain. So the dynamic section will react to whatever external signal is fed into the plugin. And to make it a bit more confusing, here is the sidechain knob, but this sidechain will feed the EQ section into the dynamics section. And then we have the split button. This splits the filter section to be put directly after the input section. Normally they are after the EQ section. And then we have this E button, which changes the characteristics of the EQ into the classic E series 242 EQ cards. The characteristics change like this. The mid bands will react to gain increase and have a smaller Q and the high frequency and low frequency uh, bands are a little bit shallower. It sounds a little bit different and the nice thing is that you have two EQ characteristics in one plugin. So that is a bonus. Let's quickly check it out with uh, the scan guitar. And there is this little THD knob, which is pretty well hidden. Let's demonstrate it on drums. It will increase the THD on a channel. A nice feature is that you have four automatable snapshots. This is nice if you want to have the same EQ tweaks for, for instance, the choruses and the verses. Then you load in a snapshot for every section. That's well all controls and I think you have a good idea what this plugin can sound like in a mix. Let's now turn the plugins on and off to check how it sounded before the plugins were used and how it sounded after the plugins were used. At the start of this review I asked, does this plugin deliver? And yes, it does deliver. It sounds big, it has a big console sound. You can make an entire mix with just this plugin, save it for some reverb and delay. Since the plugin is brand new, it's on sale right now and it's for free if you have the monthly subscription with Plugin Alliance. I would definitely check it out. If you like this review, please also check out my other plugin reviews. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and like this video and I'll see you next time. Bye!